Uh, I don't have any PowerPoints for this uh, presentation. <laughs> uh, what I'm basically going to do is just kind of explain uh, a project I'm cur currently working on and how it might be uh, appropriate for EAP as well. Uh, I'm, I'm currently working on a project with Patrick from HKU uh, for digital literacy uh, skills uh, to both teach uh, both students and teachers uh, basics of digital literacies and the need and how we can make use of technology to enhance students and teachers' understanding of this. Um, you might recognize the title, Mediated Me. It's from a chapter from uh, a book by Rodney Jones, uh, who's no longer at City U. Uh, but uh, he, pardon? Uh, he, he, he published a book a couple of years ago, a few years back, uh, called Understanding Digital Literacies. And this is, that's the title of his first chapter, but I thought that's a great great title, so I'm warning it for a course uh, called Mediated Me, an Introduction to Digital Literacy. And what I try to do with this course is I try to uh, teach through doing. So I'm making use of technology uh, as a medium uh, to teach these literacy skills. And the reason why uh, we feel that it's important is because there's a lot of talk today about EAP. A lot of the focus has been on um, reading and writing. But EAP, of course, is a lot more than that. Right? And current literature is suggesting that there is a growing need for students to understand uh, the impact of digital media because a lot more uh, knowledge is being transferred through digital media. Right? Whether it's podcasts, uh, websites, wikis, that sort of thing. Uh, and there needs to be a growing understanding of multimodality, how different modes of communication can form new forms of knowledge and how it has an impact on meaning. So this is a lot of information that I feel that we're not teaching our students, uh, or if we are, we're not doing it adequately enough. These are uh, the ILOs for the course that we've created, uh, which is pretty basic. But we want students to understand the terms, concepts, and theories related to digital literacies, identify possibilities, analyze and evaluate, use, and then eventually create. So you can see a scaffolding uh, uh, of understanding the background of digital literacies in that sense. And then uh, we aligned the course. So this is on the website that students see in Canvas. Uh, they begin to define, they look at multimodality, and then eventually they get into remixing and mashups and hyper-reading because, of course, uh, one of the things that many students may not realize is that hypertext, for example, can act as a rhetorical tool. Right? How is that link having an impact on the content that they're reading? Does it lead to uh, another uh, website that supports the author's main argument? Does it show a contrasting view? Are they using it in a rhetorical way? Uh, and do our students have that skill to do that? Uh, and then online language, how does it change how we communicate online? And then being more critical. So the course is built to uh, scaffold their understanding uh, of the subject area. Um, in relation to technology, uh, the course is actually designed in a blended format. And I've taken my experience over the years of looking at online learning, blended learning, and my work with Minerva, which is, oddly enough, called flipped fully online learning, uh, where it's synchronous uh, learning in a conferencing tool uh, platform, but it's flipped in that they have to do a lot of activities before they come online, uh, and it works quite well. So I've taken a lot of these strategies from these different courses and I've turned it into this flipped classroom, uh, where learning objectives are clearly defined every week. They're given uh, certain readings and activities they must do from discussion forums, to readings, to uh, videos, and follow-up quizzes to ensure that they understand the content before they come to the class. And I'm trying to make it very clear to the students at the beginning how this course is organized. So uh, it's very clear at the beginning that they have to do the online work, and then they go into an active learning activity where I will not lecture, I will not be standing up here like I am now talking to everyone. I will have tasks. I'll begin with a prep poll, something using something like the Moose, right, to kind of test their knowledge of what they've done from, in, from the online materials before they come. And then immediately go into some sort of activity 
where the goals are explained, they go, they go into breakout groups, they come back in the breakout, breakout groups, we have a discussion. The, the breakout group might be to solve a problem, might be able to create an artifact, something along those lines, then we have a closure moment. And then depending on the lesson, we might have one to two activities. And then we have a wrap up and a reflection poll again with something like the groups. Again, what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to do with what I'm teaching. So to give you a quick example, to give you some background, this is the welcome video I show students. It's, it's, it might seem a little, uh, uh, I don't know, confusing at first, because what I try to do with this video is I try to have it so that later on in the course I can come back to it. And it's meant to look in an amateurish way because I also want to show that this is something that, that uh, both amateurs and professionals do in an academic world. Uh, because you have a lot of uh, academics who are producing uh, short, amateurish type of podcasts. Do you find yourself longing for the apocalypse? I did. I was looking for a reason to live. Hello, welcome to Digital Me, an introduction to digital literacy. I will be your instructor for this semester. My name is Sean, and I'm really looking forward to meeting all of you. Alright, I won't make you watch the entire <laughs> video. But I wanted to show that first part because it kind of uh, gives a good example of what I'm trying to do in the class. One, there's a multimodal approach to uh, the, the video. Uh, two, it shows that anyone can just quickly put together a, a video. I, it didn't take me long to do this at all. Uh, three, later on in the course, I teach a little bit about remix culture. And what, right there, what we have there are snippets from different videos that they'll see later on in the course. Right? So I'm doing a bit of remixing throughout the course of different videos. Uh, particularly that one where the guy was talking about being depressed. Actually, it's quite a funny video uh, of uh, someone imitating the genre of uh, a medical medicine brand in the United States or North America. You might be familiar with these type of commercials. And, and medicine is nature, and how nature can solve all your bad symptoms. All right? And it's a very well-designed video and that they're taking different genres. And this is something that, and I'll wrap up now, uh, this is something that the course does get at, in that we mix language, oral and written language, multimodal language, such as images and gestures, and we also mix in conventions from different genres and our experiences. So sometimes our understanding of a lot of these digital artifacts comes from this mixture of our experiences. Uh, the conventions of the experiences, but also the genres and the ideas and the knowledge, and then the multimodal mixture. So this is one of the projects that we're working on right now. Okay, thank you.